Hello and welcome to Evening Reading and Prayer. It is Tuesday, April the 6th of 2021. We begin with a reading from Bare Feet and Buttercups. In the glow of candlelight amidst the shifting shadows, God folds us in the soft cloak of eventide. Jesus bids us to the warm hearth of welcome. The spirit settles us with the safe dream of sleep. May the anxieties of the day leave us. May the fears of the night leave us. May the closeness of God leave us feeling beloved. Let us pray. To you, God of all moments, we lift up our hearts. May we hear your voice of blessing and empowerment in moments when our vision penetrates no farther than our suffering. May we find ways forward when our imaginations and hopes grow dim. May we find compassion when we are tempted by the false refuge of cynicism. Remind us again and again that in you, life and love are eternal and that all the world's unfolding moments are held in your hands. Amen. <clears throat> Our first scripture reading is from Psalm 22, verses 22 to 31. I will tell of your name to my brothers and sisters. In the midst of the congregation, I will praise you. You who fear the Lord, praise him. All you offspring of Jacob, glorify him. Stand in awe of him, all you offspring of Israel. For he did not despise or abhor the affliction of the afflicted. He did not hide his face from me, but heard when I cried to him. From you comes my praise in the great congregation. My vows I will pay before those who fear him. The poor shall eat and be satisfied. Those who seek him shall praise the Lord. May your hearts live forever. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord and all the families of the nations shall worship before him. For dominion belongs to the Lord, and he rules over nations. To him, indeed, shall all who sleep in the earth bow down. Before him shall bow all who go down to the dust, and I shall live for him. Posterity will serve him. Future generations will be told about the Lord and proclaim his deliverance to a people yet unborn, saying that he has done it. And from John chapter 20, verses 19 through 31. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. The Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. 
Thanks be to God. Our reading is a devotional from the Reverend Dr. Richard Wilhite, who is a graduate of Pittsburgh Theological Seminary. This passage from John's Gospel follows his telling of the crucifixion. Loss, agony, death, a desolation of hope. That's the immediate backstory. At this point, the disciples are what today we'd call trauma survivors. Still in shock from the casual violence of his public execution, they now fear for their own lives. Their suffering must have been beyond description. Perhaps that's why the gospel writer didn't try to describe it. He names only their fear. And perhaps John's very silence on the disciples' interstates may be our doorway to the story. Perhaps you've lived through a loss that left you devastated. The hard truth is that many people do. Wordless questions arise. How can I go on? How could all this have happened? In the wake of unspeakable, awful, a strange guilt often arises to compound the, mis the misery. Could I have done more? Was I somehow to blame? Can you identify? John bears witness to a reality of this human life, be it trauma or a chronic dull ache, suffering is part of our common ground. Reader, take note. It's precisely into an assembly of agonized, agonized trauma survivors that the risen Christ appears. He appears first with a greeting that's also a benediction, repeated twice for good measure, peace be with you. Beyond any judgment or blame, the words convey the same grace as the father's greeting to the prodigal. The timing is remarkable. It comes forth rightly and clearly to suffering hearts. Remarkable, too, that the risen Christ confers a directive, an assignment to people at the very nadir of hopelessness. As the Father has sent me, so I send you, he says. Earlier in John's Gospel, Jesus told the disciples something very clear about this sending. As he was sent by the God he called Father, he now sends them, not to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved. Marching orders for trauma survivors. Perhaps none other than they are so well suited to recognize the suffering of the world. The disciples are charged with the care of the same lovely and sordid, sweet and deadly world through which Jesus moved. There is no evasion. Conferred with a godlike authority to forgive or retain sins, they are not sent for condemnation, but for compassion. They will move forward on paths they cannot yet imagine, not on the strength of their own merits, but with the gifts of Holy Spirit. In the steadfast love of God, the undeniable traumas of life are not the end of this story, but a mysterious beginning. Our prayer is from the resource Bare Feet and Buttercups. Let us pray. Rejoice in the Lord, and again I say rejoice. The Lord is near, be anxious about nothing. Whatever is true, noble, right, pure, lovely, admirable, think about such things. That is how I would live, Lord. But there is so much in the papers, on television, and in other places, which is horrible, depressing, unclean, and frightening. I bring before you now what I have watched and read. If I have allowed it to defile or undermine my soul, forgive me. Teach me when to switch it off, and when to face the world's wrongness and evil in your name. If I have been escapist, not facing reality, forgive my weakness. Make me strong in the Lord, that I may face reality undaunted. I thank you for all which has opened my eyes to wonder in nature and in human life. And now, seeing the world's sin and pain in the light of your cross, may I rise with you 
to rejoice in the love which gives the joy with, which nothing can take from us. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. As Jesus greeted his disciples that evening, I now bid good night to you with the same words. Peace be with you. Good night. <laughs>